Hey, we're excited you're joining us uh, this Wednesday night. I've got a special guest with me, and we're excited to hear her wisdom and what she's received from God. And uh, so we want to pray over you, and we're going to get started. We're, gonna, we're still talking about thinking and uh, how our thoughts affect our lives, and we need to think what God thinks about us, and we need to know what He would think and, and how we should act. You know, the Bible talks about uh, how we to raise our kids, how Amen. our marriage should Amen. be, how to live our life. But even it talks about how we should think. And so thinking is so important and we're going to show you some things. So Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for the anointing on your word and the anointing on the hearer. Let it change our thoughts. Let us think God thoughts and let us just walk with you in your presence. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, I asked Miss Shirley to give me some scriptures on thinking, and she came up with some of the same ones I did last Wednesday, but I'm excited about this, and so we're going to give our, our foundation scripture, and she had the same one, and it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that means by our own strength or our flesh, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Remember, we talk about strongholds are here. Because it keeps going and says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That could be experiences, thoughts, and everything else. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Glory, glory. So, Miss Shirley, you got anything that you want to say about that? Well, you know, our weapons are not carnal. But we have the spiritual weapons. The spiritual weapons going to get you where you need to go. Amen. And the carnal weapons, is, of course, is going to pull you down. That's the stronghold is in your mind. It's in your thought pattern. What you think is what you're going to end up having. So you think a thought, and then if you think it long enough, you're going to speak it. When you begin to speak it, after thinking and speaking, you will act on it, whether it be good or bad. So that's the importance of your thoughts. That's the importance of controlling your thoughts because what you're going to think is what you're going to speak and out of the abundance of your heart, you will act on it, whether it's the wrong thing to say or speak or whether it's the right thing to do. And so what we think is so important for the victory in your life, overcoming your circumstances, your, your decisions, your help, comes from the thought of God, the Word of God, because that's how you get your victory. So when the wrong thoughts come, you must cast those thoughts down or they will rule you. If you don't put them down, they're gonna put you down. Mm -hmm. So you see, you put those thoughts down. You can't cast a thought with another thought, but you cast a thought with your mouth. Mm. You say, that is not my thought. Any thought that is not lining up with what the Word says about you, what you have, who you are in Him, what's going on in your life, any thought that don't carry you to victory, then you have to cast it down and you can say, that is not my thought. Because you have authority over your thoughts, your decisions, what you think, what you say, because that's your life. The victory is in casting down the thoughts. But when you empty that bucket, you've got to put something else in there. You've got to put what God said about it. Amen. You've got to put what He wants you to have. Amen. You've got to put what the Bible says you are, what you can have to come out of your circumstances and your situation. Amen. So so that was our next question. Thoughts are important. And you gave us uh, Proverbs 23, 7. Will you read that for us? For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And mm. of course, from that thought right there, at what are you thinking in your heart? Your heart is not your blood pump, it's your spirit. Yes. So what you're thinking in your spirit is good or bad, fear or faith. Everything's fear or faith based. So you're thinking in line with what the devil is saying. You're never going to make it. You can't get there. You'll never be healed. You can't pay your rent. Where's the money going to come from? On and on. So what you're thinking that's not in line with the word, that's what you're going to have. So as we said previous scripture there, as you think in your heart is what's going to be for you. So you replace those thoughts and say, Lord, what did you say about this? But what does the word say? But what does the word mm -hmm. say? That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. there. What does the word say about this? And so we go with what the word said about your situation. If you, if the devil is saying, well, you're never going to get healed. You've had this situation five years. 
You can't find a scripture for that. That's so right. you say, by his stripes I am healed. He sent his word and healed me. And on and on, get your foundation for what you want, not what you've got right now, <laughs> what you want and where you want to go and how you want to have it. So change that mindset mm -hmm. to come in line with what God is saying. Amen. So that's the next two scriptures that, that you gave us. So we are what we think. I want to read it in Hebrews 12, 1. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So it said, lay aside every weight and sin. Uh, and as she explained, sin comes from thoughts and thoughts become words and words become actions. And then it would go back to 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You know, a lot of people have never experienced God and because they've never experienced the things of God and never knew how to pursue God, they think that God's not for them and that they'll never get out of their situation, and they, do they? And they never can until the word comes a reality. Mm -hmm. So you can't act on something you don't know. Uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge, so yes, to speak. You can't act on something you don't know. That's the importance of the word that gives you the right thoughts, that gives you the right directions. And you have to know that but then, you know, it's not just knowledge up here. It's heart knowledge mm -hmm. down here. It's revelation knowledge mm -hmm. from God. What What is he saying to you when you pursue him, when you read his word, mm -hmm. when you pray his word, mm -hmm. when you speak his thoughts? Then you're casting down the weights. You know, if I'm going to run in a race, Pastor, uh, down the road here, but somebody's going to put weights on my ankles, I might cross that finish line, but I'm not going to cross it and win any prize. Mm. You can stumble along in your Christian life. Yes, ma'am. You might not live in victory. You go to heaven. You're going to go to heaven if you got saved. But it's a different from living in victory and taking all that he paid for that day. All that he paid, your peace, your, your revelation knowledge what you have to say. So the weight that's holding you back today, or any of us for that matter, uh, what weight in your life might be holding you back? Uh, maybe it's uh, worrying about your children. Worry is the sin, that's right. really. I didn't know that for a long time, mm -hmm. Pastor. <laughs> but worry is a sin. <clears throat> Are you worried about the kids never getting off drugs or uh, the husband never having the best job or your body not being healed, those are weights to you. So will you carry those weights or will you cast them down? Your mm -hmm. victory is in putting them aside. Lay aside those weights mm -hmm. that so easily mm -hmm. pull you back from your victory. You know, he's paid for your victory. Amen. And he can't, he's not going to come down and make you take it. But when you pray, you believe you receive that word receive is take it. Amen. Go ahead and take it by faith. Mm -hmm. Change those thoughts by faith. Say, that's not my thought. I'm not going to go there. Mm -hmm. I don't receive that. Mm -hmm. But I receive what he said about me. Who I am, what I can be, where I can go, and what I can have. Amen. So that's your victory in life. But you have to cast the thoughts down. But like we said, when you empty that thought... And maybe you have to do it many times through the day. Yeah. No, that is not my thought. Mm -hmm. That is not my thought. Mm -hmm. But you replace it with the truth. You know, you can have a doctor report, for example, and he's accurate. He diagnoses it right. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. We do not deny the fact. But he said, you'll know the truth. Amen. And it'll make you free. Mm -hmm. So the truth can come down upon the fact and it can bring the deliverance. So that's the importance of casting Amen. down, staying in the Word, mm -hmm. believing the Word, receiving mm -hmm. the Word, and acting on the Word. Amen. That's, that's so good. That's so good. So, so here's the next question. What are we supposed to think? Okay. In Philippians 4 eight, he says this. Finally, brethren, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is right, Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is good, repute, if there be any excellence and if there are anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. I guess 
by this he knew pastor we had many opportunity to think on the wrong things mm -hmm. but he said now this is what i want you to do think on the right thing amen think on the victory mm -hmm. think not not the defeat not woe is me i'm never coming out mm -hmm. can't get there mm -hmm. he said for you to think on the truth you shall know the truth amen and it will make you free mm -hmm. so when you know that truth you can go with the truth there's freedom in the truth it will make you free from obstacles and circumstances in your life when you know it and you act on it mm -hmm. and you change the thinking so you think on the truth what's honorable what's honorable in your life well the word of god is a most honorable thing yes you can have the honor and the excellence in your life from following the honor and the mm -hmm. excellence of the master himself Amen. so you can think on that what is pure think on what's good well, you know, sometimes I've told people, make a list. Make a list of all that's wrong. Make a list of all that's good. I guarantee if you'll do that, the good will outweigh it. Yeah. Because you have a roof over your head, bread on your table. Mm -hmm. And if perchance you didn't have one of these things, he will provide it. Because he said, all your needs are met. Amen. According to my riches in glory. So he can provide those things as you're thinking on the excellent and the worthy. You know, many people think, well, I'm just not worthy to receive this. Well, I'm not worthy. Well, guess what? If you're saved, you're washed in the blood. Mm -hmm. And the blood made you worthy. Amen. The blood made you worthy. Mm -hmm. So speak your answer, not your problem. Mm -hmm. So many people talk the problem all the time. You mm -hmm. know it. We've all done it. Mm -hmm. I have as well. But you know, to receive the answer, you've got to dwell on the answer. Amen. Speak the answer. Amen. Go with what he said. Do it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, so you reminded me of a hymn, "Oh Victory in, in Jesus, Jesus, My, my Savior, Savior forever. forever." He bought me and He sought me. That's something to think about. He came after you. He bought you. He sought after you, and He called you by by name and drew you into the kingdom. So, uh, there's another scripture in Isaiah 26:3 that Miss Shirley uh, gave me, and it says, "You will keep Him in perfect peace, whose mind or thoughts is stayed on you." because he trusts you. Do you trust God? Then, you know, the best way to keep trusting God is to keep your thoughts on him and peace comes. You know, I quoted Psalms 91 last week, and as I was repeating it, uh, man, just the peace of God and the strength of God and the joy of God started welling up on the inside of me because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. I abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And you start confessing the word like that and declaring it, it builds you up. All the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, uh, Miss Shirley uh, also ha wanted to uh, talk about the story in Mark 2, 9 about the uh, the guy that was paralytic. And he has four guys that uh, brought this man to Jesus. They couldn't get into the house for the crowd, so they pulled the roof back. And I've talked about this, too. And they let him down uh, through the ceiling, and, uh, and Jesus began to minister to him. But Miss Shirley... The Lord spoke to her about this this meeting right here for us, and she's got a word from that for us. And so uh, I'm going to let her start at Mark 2, 9 okay. and, and read it and, and let her expound on it. Uh, Mark 2, 9 says, Which is easier? Jesus said to him, What's easier to say? Your sins be forgiven? Or rise up and walk, take your bed. But that you may know that the Son of God, of man, has power... That's authority. You have authority. Luke 10, 19 gives you that. On earth to forgive sin, he said to the paralytic. What's easier to say here? He did both, you know. He forgave you sin. He saved you. He's healed you. He's your deliverer in every circumstance. But in going through this, there was three commandments there. The first one spoke to the spirit man. He said, rise. In other words, he said, get up. Rise. Then the second one said, take up your bed. That's for your soulish realm, your mind, your emotions, and your intellect. He's talking to the man. He wants the man to change his image. He wants this man to see this. He wants to see him carrying the bed instead of the bed carrying him. Mm -hmm. So that's an image that he needs to change for this man to receive what, what he has for mm -hmm. him. And the third one was walk. So he spoke to the spirit. He spoke to the soulish realm. He spoke to the body. Get up and walk. And the man did. He changed that image. He could hear that 
and the body obey. If you will get your spirit and your soulish realm, your mind, your will, your emotions in line with the spirit, then the body's going to follow that. Mm -hmm. It'll go right along behind it. Your body will. Mm -hmm. Because you're not giving the body the choice. Mm -hmm. You're controlling the flesh mm -hmm. through the right thinking and the right words and the right thing that God had to say. So well, so the word says that our mind and our flesh are an enemy to our spirit. Absolutely. So we can control our thinking and our flesh by just what you said, by right? By just what that. Well, you know you look at it. Uh, you know the, the spirit should be the king, so mm -hmm. to speak. He should be ruling over the mind and the body. Many times we let the mind and the body gang up against the spirit mm -hmm. and it don't work that way. Mm -hmm. But get your word and your actions and your thoughts and your speaking in line and with the spirit, what God has to say, and then the body will come right along with it because there's victory in Jesus. Amen. Period. Amen. <laughs> in the word. Amen. So I'm going to close with this. You know that God has thoughts towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. God has an expected end for you, and He wants to take you there. Will you follow Him in His Word? Will you follow His Spirit? His, the Spirit wants to guide you and take you to God's expected end for everybody's life. And He wants us to have victory, even over death. And so let's pray over you and thank you for listening today. Father, we thank you that your word went forth. Change our thinking, change our, yes. our, 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 our bodies. And Father, strengthen our spirits to live in the spirit, to live by the spirit man. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells. We're the house of God. So Holy Spirit, guide us and direct us by your word and by the Holy Spirit. And we put down wrong thoughts, evil thoughts, thoughts that are contrary to the word. That's doubt and unbelief. Let us take a hold of your word and follow after you because there's love, joy, peace, gentleness, and kindness there, and even fun there in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God bless y'all. Amen. Praise God.